Welcome everybody to the world's worst fishing and particularly welcome to this episode of quick tips. So the quick tips series of videos is going to be a completely separate playlist on the world's worst fishing YouTube channel where we basically dissect different parts of the bait making process into shorter more condensed videos to get you information quicker. So a lot of people have a lot of questions about bait making particularly how to start and then kind of beginner uh, all, all the way up to advanced levels and these videos are designed to basically address just a few questions at once in a much more condensed uh, format to allow you to get information faster. Okay and for episode of quick tips number one here we're going to be looking at basic plastisol preparation. Not plastisol cooking but basic plastisol preparation. The two common ways you are going to receive your plastisol in this hobby is in the gallon jug and then the five gallon bucket, sometimes referred to as a pail. Now the first thing you need to know about liquid plastisol is that it requires mixing. And that's what we're gonna be focused on in just this first little episode, is just how to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success. And so our plastisol sponsor here on the world's worst fishing is of course Dead On Plastics. Anybody who's going to start this hobby, I highly recommend you check Dead On Plastics out. They're a great company out of Michigan. It's a non-phthalate plastic, which means it's a little healthier for you to use, and uh, it just has all the properties that you want. So, if we look at this top here, uh, that looks a little strange, right? Plastisol is supposed to look like milk. It's supposed to be a white, thick substance just like milk. What you're seeing is the plasticizer oils, because as plastic sits, it's just like uh, take some dirt, shake it up in some water, that dirt is eventually gonna settle. That's what happens to your resin. So the most common way to do this is to take a variable speed drill, something that you can go really slow and then pull it, uh, uh, reach uh, uh, fast stirring levels. And this is just a long paint stirrer that I got at uh, Walmart. You can get them at a hardware store. And what I like about this is that it has a nice long shaft so that I can reach the bottom, okay, where most of the resin is so if i pull that out you see that white stuff that came with it that's your resin and so basically what i want to do is i want to start just on one side of the bucket i find that that gets uh the resin suspended better than if i'm doing this in the center so i'm going to start on one side and i'm just going to start mixing here and you'll see how fast that resin comes all the way to the top and this is almost an entirely full bucket yeah there it is see it there look at that that's how I know that now my resin is starting to get suspended. And so what I wanna do is I wanna keep doing that for, I don't know, maybe two or three minutes. Now this bucket has been sitting for weeks. I have not used much of this bucket at all. Uh, so the more it sits, the more mixing you want. But basically, you want to do this a few times until you really get your system down and mixed plastic is gonna set you up for success. Unmixed plastic, is definitely going to set you up for failure no matter which plastic you choose to use. And another thing that you want to keep in mind as you use more plastic out of a bucket as the level of plastic gets lower, the more that a large paint stirring bit like that is going to agitate it. So once your plastic gets lower, you don't just want to go full speed and start sloshing your plastic around, you're actually going to aerate it and then you'll have more bubbles in your plastic. So you know, the key here is to get a good even mix, but not agitate uh, or aerate your plastic because you don't want to mix bubbles into it. Because air bubbles, as we'll see in later episodes, uh, cause a lot of pain for the bait maker. So you want a nice, slow and steady, wins the race, thorough mix of your plastic. And this is the most efficient way to do it in a five gallon bucket. Okay, so next up we have the gallon jug. And if you just kind of look closely here, you'll see the separation line. This is a very firm blend. This is the saltwater blend. As such, it has a ton of resin. As you can see, the bottom part that's solid white here, that's your resin. This is the plasticizer. As you can see, it's, it's very heavy on the resin. However, in a gallon jug, you don't just want to just shake it as hard as you can. Yeah, that'll mix it up, but you're also going to have some air bubble trouble. So what a lot of people like to do, and what I have always found works, is just to rotate it just like this sort of like a rotisserie chicken you know and you want to do this for several minutes another thing you can do is maybe 30 minutes before you know you're going to pour some baits flip it upside down and just let gravity do the work for you and just pull those resins back down towards the top 
and then you want to come back and then you kind of want to do a little bit of light sloshing but basically you know you're just rotating it like a rotisserie chicken now what the owners of dead on plastics recommend you do is if you buy in the one gallon jug transfer it okay to some sort of open bucket that you can then use a hand uh, mixing uh, apparatus or the drill bit with and that's just going to i think promote a better stir in general however if you are going to stay with the with the one gallon jugs don't get violent with it okay take your time leave it flipped upside down 30 minutes before then right before you're going to use it do this a few times that's going to promote a good mix without agitation okay everybody that is it for this first very pilot episode of quick tips just some basic plastisol preparation uh, so I hope you have found this format very helpful. It's something that you can reference over and over without having to watch a 20 or 30 minute uh, video. So I thought this would just kind of be a helpful little mini series, so to speak. Uh, so now for uh, episode number two, uh, if you want to see about proper plastisol cooking, as far as getting it to the right temperature, uh, stay tuned for episode number two.